Hi, my name is Sandy Baird. I'm a citizen activist. I guess that's the best way to describe me. I'm also an attorney. And I'm here with our monthly show. Today I'm with City Councilor Ali Dieng, who is uh, leaving the City Council. I regret that greatly in March. But he's here to talk about the subject of Senegal. Senegal is a country in Africa. Uh, and that is presently, I guess, undergoing some disturbances, like many of the nations in Africa right now, particularly in French West, what well, used to be called French West Africa, right? Yes. And so Ali uh, is an expert, I believe, on Africa, because you were born there, right? And yes. you were born in what country? In Mauritania, and I grew up in Senegal. Okay, so you grew up in Senegal? Yes. Okay, Cause, so maybe we can show first to our viewers where Senegal is, where Mauritania is, and talk a little bit about specifically Senegal. Okay, okay. wonderful. So probably as you can see in here, you can see Senegal is right here, a very small, tiny country. Mauritania is on north of Senegal, right? But within Senegal, there is a small country named Gambia. And in the south, we have two countries, Guinea-Bissau and Guinea-Conakry. We also, Senegal also has a border with, with Mali. Mali, yes, and yes. you are from Mauritania. Mauritania, born there and grew up in Senegal, but my, uh, um, university study took place in Mauritania, so I in studied Mauritania. in both. Yes, in both in both countries. Yeah. Really, you studied in both countries. Yes, okay. elementary in Senegal and um, 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 university in Mauritania. Yes. Okay. Well, can I ask one question before I go on? Yeah. What do you mean Gambia is within Senegal? So B Gambia is a tiny little country. Mm -hmm. It is basically inside Senegal, sometimes you cannot even see it if the map is not enlarged a little bit, if the map is very small. But it is a sovereign country with their own constitution, their own president, and their own way of doing business, right? Mm -hmm. Gambia and Senegal um, share a lot of things, right? Mm -hmm. They share culture, they share religion, right? They share, um, you know, the food, the recipes, they share a lot of stuff. And also many languages that are spoken in Senegal are also spoken in um, Gambia. The ethnicities are almost the same. Because if you go south of Senegal, you cannot go to south of Senegal without going through Gambia. Mm. Or you have to skip and go around very long time, right? So basically it's two uh, different countries, but the culture the system of doing things is almost the same. Except with one exception, right? Yes. And what is that exception? The exception is basically the Senegalese people, their official language is French, while the Gambian people, their official language is English. Is there an explanation as to how that happened? Why one part of the, uh, that region is French speaking and the other English speaking? Yes, I mean, until the early 60s, right, all of the African countries were um, under colonization regime of Europe. Of for, Europe? Of Europe, yep. For example, French, um, they colonized Senegal, they colonized Mali, they colonized Mauritania, but the English, right, England colonized Gambia. Yep, and you go to Guinea-Bissau, they were colonized by the Portuguese. By the Portuguese, exactly. even though it's like all in the same region. All in the same region, but different colonization systems. So who created the borders? The borders were created by exactly those colon col col colons in uh -huh. 1944. I think it's when they just considered Africa as like a, a, um, uh, a cake. A cake? Yes, basically, and then you see all of these borders ah. was created by um, 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 people of Europe during colonization. People of Europe, exactly. white people, generally. Yeah, exactly, okay. yes, yes. But also, though, I mean, I think the reason I'm asking is so few Americans know anything about any of this. Yes, um, I mean, yes. I mean, there are a couple people here uh, those who studied African yeah, study, exactly. they understand the historical perspective right. from slavery to colonization to now independence. People, some people have, but you're right, the majority of the population of the United States don't have a better understanding of what Africa is. And some of them even just think that Africa is a, a, a country, 
and not a continent. Uh, really? Uh -huh. yes. yes. So Americans don't, it appears to me that Americans know nothing about the fact that Af all of Africa was basically conquered by the European countries, and therefore the borders were drawn also a lot by those colonial powers in Europe, correct? That's correct, yes. Including yes. at the Congress of Berlin uh, in the 19th century, yes, right? Yes, yes. When Africa was sort of divided up for the benefit yes. of the white European yes, powers. Yes, yes, exactly. The Conference of Berlin, I think it was precisely in 1944. No, I think uh, it was in the 19th century, but I might 19th be wrong. 1844. Yeah. But at the same time, um, you know, African people really deeply participated in almost all the wars. Yes, for right. example. Of Europe. Yes, like World War One, uh -huh. World War Two, right. um, and you know, they were also called the Tirayer Senegale. The, sh what? the Senegalese shooters. Ah. They are African who are taken by the French um, regime. Um, they train them into military to um, fight for, and this, for and the, the French. Sen would you say the Senegalese wanted to fight for the French? No, I mean, basically, it was, if you are colonized, you are under the regime of the right. country who colonized you. Everything, right. they, the resources, the government is all run by them. Right, uh -huh. and therefore, if I am in a war, yes, I will be sure to make sure that my my ranks, the military, will have access to food, will have access also to personnel. So they took some of the Senegalese they African people, them. exactly, to go mm -hmm. fight for the liberation of France against the Germans. There is one country that was not colonized, correct, in Africa, and that was Ethiopia. I heard yes, Ethiopia has not been colonized because they used to have. Um, a, 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 a regime, a uh, 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 monarch regime, yeah. you know, uh, uh, Isla Silas, I believe is his name. He was a very good and respected um, leader, and I don't Haile think... Haile Selassie. Haile Selassie, right. yes, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes, they were not, but many of the other countries were colonized. But well, now, the Italians tried to. Yes. Yeah. There is also one country who has, like, a deep relation with the United States of America, which is um, Liberia. Yes. There is a Talk history a yes. into it because Liberia um, was basically Where is that? created. It's it's not far. It's right like here? right here. It's like not far from Ghana, Togo. Okay. It's it's basically around somewhere around here. Mm -hmm. Right right here. Right. Uh, it has a border with Sierra Leone and Cote d'Ivoire. Mm -hmm. Historically, um, you know, the United States of America, the government, after the slavery was abolished, right? There, Maybe before even. Yes, right. there were there were like a call for if the former slaves wanted to return to Africa, now there is a land for uh -huh. them to go back and, and return to. And many of them were like descendant of slaves from the United States of America who choose to return to uh, Liberia and and, and, and... and that still is the case. Liberia has a close relationship with the United States L still? Liberia, I, I believe so, I believe so. Um, Liberia um, is a sovereign and democratic country still, you know, they all have their problems. But I think it would be very important for us to focus on um, uh, West Africa yeah, a little bit. Today, right. and, yes, and talk a little bit about what's happening in Senegal, yeah, for example. Yeah, please, that would be great. So, like I stated earlier, in 1960, precisely, um, the African countries started to gain their independence from their respective colonized countries, yep. right? Senegal took with the it's, fight, I mean, they had to fight for that. Correct? I mean, I from um, in some cases, uh -huh. but in most cases, it was given. To really, them, you know, um, there were not a lot. Yes, people were were were, were wanted to to be free. Um, it was given to them. They did not fight for it, for example. But democratically, in a way, um, in 1960, Senegal received its independence from received France. Received it. France yes. agreed. Yes, to, 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 to move out and for the Senegalese people to organize their elections, choose their president, and strengthen their local and democracies. And that was without violence? Without violence. Okay. The, even if there were, it was not signif significant. Mm -hmm. It was just few, right? And in 1960... So Senegal... Is a republic? Republic, yep, of Senegal. Okay. Yeah. Uh, um, 1960, then, um, the, pre the first president of Senegal was Leopold Sedar Senghor. 
Senghor. Senghor. He like a poet, uh, uh, yeah. a writer, a very wise man, very smart person, um, who you know managed, who who really understood the, the the French language, the French culture, and I think Senghor's first wife was a white French uh, woman, um, and then Senghor was the first president of Senegal from 1960 to, to the early 80s, 1981, right? Um, and then another president called Abdou Diouf became president in 1981 until 2002, right? Uh, yeah. Very long time. And then from 2002 to 2012, right, uh, President Macky Sall, the current president, took office in 2012 after Abdoulaye Wad, mm -hmm. right? So basically Senghor, Abdul Juf, Abdul Aywad, and then currently Macky Sall. Currently? Yes. He's still there? He's still the current okay. president. And it's still a republic? He's still a republic, yeah, a republic. Uh, Macky Sall was also a member of the Abdul Aywad government as a minister, mm -hmm. right? Minister of Energy, I believe. I think he also became a uh, first minister, mm -hmm. right? And um, they, they, in one point in 2012, um, they would organize elections. Uh, Abdul, Abdullahi Wad can, could no longer run for office anymore. So Macky Sall created a coalition in order to take the reign of the country. And he was successful. And from there, he's still the current president. But now what is interesting about all of this is um, starting in 2020, 2021, um, there were a question whether or not Macky Sall could gain a third term. What does it say in the Constitution? This Constitution, it was a little bit, it, it's a little bit, uh, because the Constitution was changed by Macky Sall uh -huh. to say that now, as we move forward, any president could have two terms of seven years. Two terms of seven years, Yes, right. but during that time, the Constitution was also changed a little bit. And now the question whether or not Macky Sall will continue to be uh, president, right? When those two terms exactly does start? I think they were, that's exactly when the turmoil started. Uh -huh. Many people were saying he is not going to be uh, seek a, a re-election third term. And I think in 2020, there were a lot of protests for, for him. In, for in, him? No, um, in, in, in Senegal, uh -huh. for him to not seek re-election, okay. right? Mm -hmm. um, hundreds of people are, were arrested and are still arrested. The biggest Arrested for protesting? For this lot of protests or you have said something wrong uh -huh. uh, on TV, you know, basically targeting the current government. Mm -hmm. You know, there were arrested, some activists, basically. And one of the um, opponent of Macky Sall, uh, Usman Sonko, Right, he's still being held in 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 in, in captivity right now by the um, Senegalese government. Mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. um, now, in one point, Macky Sall decided to not seek re-election. He made a public announcement that he is not going to be a candidate for the. When was this? Hmm? When did he do that? He did it like a couple months ago. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, everybody, the opinion, international opinion, everybody was excited. The United that States, that he was not going to because to make sure that the country becomes safe and stable and for the betterment of the Senegalese people, it was good for Macky Sall to leave and not seek a third term. Why? Just constitutionally, you mean? Which he decided to do. Yeah. Right? He decided to not seek a, a, a third term. Third term, okay. Yeah. And, you know, everybody was happy. And everybody was gearing up to um, the election, which mm -hmm. was going to take place actually on the 25th of February. Right, next like week. Like next week right. was exactly when the election was supposed to take place. Mm -hmm. They identified the 10, I believe, candidates um, who were vetted and for those candidates to start to do the campaigning and stuff like that. But on February 7, Macky Sall came out um, and decided to postpone the elections because there are some issues around the constitutional um, uh, advisory. The, 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 yeah, the, the, the Conseil Constitutional, that's how they call them. It's just, um, it's a seven-member appointed 
jurists appointed by the president who are um, safeguarding basically the 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 constitution uh -huh. of the country right. and basically the it's a branch of the government right the judicial system they mm -hmm. like judge governor that the non judges of the united states for example so the conseil constitutional um, um, from the perspective of Magisal, their integrity was breached because they did not allow one candidate to go to the elections. They uh -huh. refused for him to go. Why? Because that person had dual citizenship ah. of French and also Senegal. So they, people said he should not run? He should not run. Because right. he had dual citizenship. With the French. With the French people. Uh -huh. He did not renounce to his citizenship with the French people. So ah. therefore, um, he cannot run. Well, is that right. in the Constitution also? It's in, it's in the Constitution. No one, you have to remove, you have to recuse um, yourself from any from other nationality right. yep, in order for you to become a candidate of Senegal. Okay. Yeah, so you can be both, but you can't be a candidate having both um, citizenship mm -hmm. on your on your shoulders. So, and I think things started to continue, and then um, the Conseil Constitutional vetted all the candidates, right? But it's afterward they identified that actually there were another candidate who had dual citizenship with French too, but uh -huh. who was allowed to participate. Uh, mm. So, I think the Senegalese people were a little bit um, confused, but from my perspective, the situation now is 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 resolved. It is. Uh, it is resolved in a fact that uh, they identify when exactly uh, the postponement of these elections that was supposed to take place next week, when it was going to take place, and they identify December fifteen. Next year. Next year uh, of this year. Okay. Basically, right. at the end of this year. That's a long time away. Yes, couple. I mean, yeah, nine months from now, ten months from now. Um, and what and, about these dual citizens? Yep, yeah, none of those. I mean, I think now um, the question was whether or not the Conseil constitutional integrity was breached, and Makisal decided to postpone the election and move them like further in order for people to investigate who had better vet um, the candidate that are currently seeking to be the next president of, of the United States. And also to investigate whether or not um, the integrity of the um, jurist, the Conseil Constitutional, was breached. So basically, it's just to make sure that everyone is safe. And also, once we identify this is the candidate who won the election, uh -huh. that no one else would try to protest it. Because these elections are fair and they are also secured. Yeah. However, I, so there, is there a kind of a threat to the republic? What's mm. going on? Because the only thing I know about it, it was from uh, some brief report, I think, on Amy Goodman on yeah. Democracy Now!, saying that Senegal has been a peaceful country and that th is this a threat to that peace or what? Yeah, um, good question. Um, it, I mean, it seems like a bit of a constitutional yes, problem. Yes, yes, and I think Senegal, Amy Goodman and anyone who's saying that Senegal is a peaceful co country, is a democratic country, is true. It's true? It's true. Because Senegal, since the 60s, they are one of the few countries in Africa who never had a coup. Never? Like, a, a, yeah, a presidential coup. Like, the military is not involved in how the country is being run and by the And everywhere else president. in Africa appears to be in mostly, French West Africa. Yes, right, right, most, right. most of them. Mauritania had that, you know, Burkina Faso currently. Right. just had it. Yes, right. Mali, right. many, 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 um, you know, uh, Gabon, many African countries, even if it's not now, in the past, they had some level of coup d'etat. Right? But Meaning that the government was taken over by an unelective force yes, of some kind, mostly, usually the military. The military, right. that's what a coup, coup, coup means. But people are portraying the current situation of Senegal, this is still a coup, but yes. it is a constitutional coup. What does that mean? Basically, the president, uh, people did not use force to take back the country, but they use maneuvering 
in order to still stay in power okay. and move the elections a little bit further. Okay, so who stayed in power then? Basically, the current president will stay in power uh -huh. until the new elections are there. So that's why they're characterizing it as But it was um, done without arms. Without arms. But, yeah. you know, there are some turmoil, though, um, in the country. And, you know, we'll talk that's... Talk about that. The turmoil is basically there are a couple of protests, uh -huh. you know, in, 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 in Senegal on the streets. Right, some kids and also interaction between the population and the the, the police, for example. Uh, but that is not at a the scale is very small. It's at a very small scale. Now. Now, because one, uh, you know, business as usual. People wake up. Businesses are open. Right, um, the market is full of people. People are going to school. People are going to the hospital, and there is no curfew starting 9 p.m. or 10 p.m. Business as usual. Senegal is still booming. Is still striving. Right, mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, people are concerned whether or not it's legitimate for the current president to move, uh -huh. remove this, and also um, to, you know self proclaim himself as the Pro president, pre uh, exactly, right. as we move forward, while this investigation is being unfolded. What's the investigation? The investigation is basically the, um, there is a commission that will be investigating whether or not um, the integrity of the Conseil Constitution has been breached or not. Uh -huh. Right, whether every, all the candidates are vetted, and also who are the right candidates that will be um, seeking the voters' approval to And will the, the current president. president, do you suppose, be allowed to be in the elections in December? I mean, he is not. He initially said he's not going to be a, um, a candidate, and just he is postponing this election in making sure that this investigation what takes place. Think? From my perspective, I think he is smart enough and I think um, he has done great job for, has he? yeah, like, you know, I mean, I think he modernized the country. What right? do you mean by that? Modernized, like, in terms of infrastructures, right, in terms of um, safety, in terms of economic development, in what about terms of poverty. I mean, it's a continuous work that needs to be done by each and every single African country, and uh -huh. he has done his part. Right, but still, people are struggling there, like anywhere like, else. Like in America. Yes, yes, uh, people are struggling all the time. But I think the Senegalese people also do not wait. They don't wait for the government to um, support them of how to live. The government just have the power to make things better in order for people to safely, you know, uh, interact with the economy. Right, you know, agriculture, um, um, industry, you know so many different sectors so that the government need to ensure that everything is stable in the country in order for people to operate their business as well. So what you're saying to our audience and to me, mm -hmm. uh, that Senegal has developed up till recently as a democratic country or a country that has elections, correct? Yeah. yeah. Um, and that it's doing well. Mm -hmm and that this is a constitutional crisis. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, and that basically you're saying that this president, do you agree that he has done this, postponed elections and stayed in power? What do you really think? Well, um, you know, I think as an elected official, before I pronounce myself about what I think, I need to get all the facts. Yeah, okay. Right? Uh, do, you ha do you think you do have all the facts? Yeah, I mean, I hear um, constitutionally whether or not that's, that's, that's accurate, that Macky Sall can, 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 can stay, right, can, can move. And I think what I have heard and from scholars is basically, he needed to advise, to give his advice how to proceed when there are allegations that uh, the Conseil constitutional integrity has been breached. But it was not for him to say, okay, since it's a breach, now I am going to become the president until you guys mm -hmm. organize new elections, right? From my perspective, that. And from my perspective, he could have just, just, just easily step out from the position 
and maybe put there the, um, the, the, the general secretary of the army, for example, to just say, okay, you are the interim president. And uh, until, the army? Yes, uh -huh. and uh, the army. And I think it will be also important for me to talk about here. Yeah. As you can see here, I have both military, I have both the flag of Senegal and also of the United ah, States, right? Why? Because the state of my state right here has a strong 15 years military relationship between the state of Senegal and um, the state of Vermont. The state of Vermont? Yes. What do you mean by that? The Vermont National Guard. Yeah, so they're in Senegal? They are. They have a military partnership with the Army of Senegal. How does that work? It happened 15 years ago, and the way it, in which it worked is, for example, the guards, they go there, and they train the Senegalese army about how to defuse bombs and also how to provide military quick um, surgeries. Basically, they provide training and support for the Senegalese army. And also for the Senegalese army, uh, I think also there is this component of selling each other some um, you arms. Know, weapon, arms, right? Arm dealing. I think there is that, that component. And also, how do we? mitigate climate change and I think this military partnership is is, is, is just great. I love you do? it. I respect it, yes. Because I don't understand it exactly between a state of Vermont. How does that work? I suppose it has the blessings of our national government too. Correct? Of course, of yeah. course. And I think Is not it our National Guard? It's the Vermont National Guard amongst any other state national guard, there are these military partnerships that exist in so many different countries, they, not only it in does? Africa. They do? For example, the Vermont National Guard, the partnership that they have is not only with Senegal. They have one with Macedonia, they have one with um, Austria. They have three different military partnerships with three different countries around the globe. I'm surprised. Yeah, and it's 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 great. It's great. I met the, I met yeah. both uh, former two president of Senegal. I uh -huh. met with Abdoulaye Wad when he was here, right? I met with the current president Macky Sall when he was also here, um, because they work to strengthen this partnership that exists between um, the state um, of Vermont and the. Republic of Senegal around military. So why does Senegal need a military at all? I mean, it's any country will need to have their Except own Costa military. Rica. Yes, yes, yes. Costa Rica is maybe a branch of the United States or something. I, like that. Well, I don't, you know, yeah, you right. Understand. But any sovereign country has, you know, have the right to develop a military. No, they have the right to. Yes, I, yes. I, obviously. But. Yes, and you know, if you share border with all the countries, yes, you need to protect your borders from insurgents and just for the safety and well-being of your population. Yeah. Does that mean then that the government or the government of Vermont at least approves or supports the current government? Also of Senegal? Okay, so I think it would be good also to make the distinction between state partnership yes, and okay, also that, military right. partnership. Okay. Right? Uh, well, in, this, in this case, it's just military partnership, and I think the two militaries of the two countries are working together in sharing resources and uh, training each other and things like all those lines. Yeah, but the state of Vermont, I don't think they involved. And also, there's actually a bill currently at the State House called the S-30. Yes, what right? is and it? And S-30 is for the state of Vermont to identify four different states around the nation where they can build relationships, state relationships. Military or no, state? state. Like, I think we have a state relationship. With Japan. Right, but what about in... Uh, Russia. Don't we have some kind of a relationship with a part of Russia? I think Karelia or something. I think the city of Burlington has a yes, yes, a sister city, a sister city. Yes. But I also think under Madeleine Cunin that they may have developed some kind of a state relation with okay. part of Russia, Karelia or something. Yeah. But that's something to be examined. Yes, right? yes. And S30 is currently being, um, you know, debated. There are testimonies, and I testified for the importance of building the state partnership um, uh, between Senegal and Vermont, and all this military partnership that already exists. Let's build on that to the level of not military, but does that mean level. that we would Vermont might get involved in their domestic politics in any no, way? No, I, from my perspective, no. It's just about cooperation agreements uh -huh. in terms of economic development, cultural development, you know. 
um, culture, education, those type of things, like people to people Hope relationship, so. but not getting involved. But like, also, weren't you involved in trying to create a sister city relationship? Yes, thank you for saying that. Yeah. And um, I think we are making great development for it. Um, Chess East. What city? Uh, Chess East of Senegal uh -huh. and the city of Burlington. Um, and we have other sister cities. We have other with Bethlehem and Arad. We Bethlehem have and others. Palestine. Yes. Arad and uh, Israel. Yes. yes. And um, with, with La Fleur, France. And Porta Cabezas in Nicaragua. Nicaragua. I think, yes, because the state of Vermont or the city of Burlington has never had a sister city with an African country. No, we need one, I believe. We need one, and I think we're making headway, and I believe that the resolution, that the resolution will be introduced on uh, March 11th. Oh, yeah, to have a sister city, and yeah. I'll go. Exactly, of course. I'm and a strong you are part supporter. Of you are part of the committee, the local committee here, I that am. will work in strengthening. Yes, you, and I think Jared Carter would be good, Adam Ambanga, um, and, and maybe we'll do a whole visit to Senegal. Wonderful, wonderful. Great. Uh, I, I don't know if you have time. Yep. Okay, I think we're probably a little bit out of time, but I thank you for giving Americans much needed education about yes. Africa, yes. and in particular, in particular, Senegal. So thank you very much, Ali. Pleasure. And maybe we'll see you again, and certainly on the 11th, right? Wonderful. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you.